Business owners in Butte are stepping up to help those who lost their livelihoods in a fire in Uptown Butte last week. Stories about missing and murdered indigenous women not only hit close to home here in Montana, but across the entire United States. I'm Olivia Bulis with Scripps News Literacy Program with the story. Looking forward to that one, yeah. working uh, closely with uh, our newsroom and uh, the Mon uh, Bozeman High School. Uh, That'll be fun. That. We'll have that in a moment. You don't want to miss it. Uh, last evening, driving out around right after sunset was down. That little sliver of a crescent Isn't moon and Venus was that much brighter than a, that was gorgeous super bright. last that night. That was cool. It was absolutely beautiful. Uh, and part of the problem that we have this morning, uh, it's a little chilly, and that's mm -hmm. because of the clear skies. Right. Uh, doesn't that cloud cover works as an insulating blanket? That's not in place. So we're into the somebody threw the blanket points. off. They did. Uh, that <laughs> happens, uh, or somebody stole them. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, looks like cloud cover trying to work its way back in along with some snow showers for the afternoon. It looks like we're going to see spotty snow for the afternoon and evening with a nice uh, dash of snow for the overnight as well, at least very possible into the overnight. Daytime highs only in the mid-30s. It is warm enough that we could see a rain-snow mix. Expect to see some delays as you're driving home today and probably to work tomorrow. More on that, of course, coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. 630 now. A crash between a car and a pickup caused a dangerous situation not only for drivers but Bozeman police last night. Happened in the middle of one of Bozeman's busiest intersections. The collision happened at the intersection of 19th and West Main around 630. Bozeman police officer on scene says there were only minor injuries, but the crash did force officers to direct traffic for about an hour while crews investigated and picked up the piece. That incident, by the way, still remains under investigation. Officials in Butte are continuing their investigation of a fire that happened last week at the Irish Times building. In the meantime, other businesses in the uptown area are lending a helping hand. Neptune's John Amy has more. The fire in Butte that gutted the Irish Times building on January 23rd was not only devastating to the three businesses that operated out of the building, but also to other uptown businesses. It was a shock to us to wake up to that. I, mean, I, I didn't believe it at first. I saw it on Facebook. And... The owners of Salancha Butte America Pub responded by hosting a fundraising party at their bar to benefit the Muddy Creek Brewery two days after the fire to help the business and their employees. We did our fundraiser not for any recognition, just because it's the Butte thing to do. We have the same staff, we share staff, we share customers, we share beers, you know, it's, it, it's important to support each other. More than a dozen employees were left without work after fire ravaged that building last week. But some bars in Uptown Butte have taken on these employees temporarily until they can get back on their feet. Something special about Butte, you know, it, we just rally together and it's part of the heart and soul of this town is that, you know, if that happened to anybody, you know, there's all sorts of businesses that are stepping up. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. John tells us Butte Fire officials say they're getting help from the state fire marshal's office. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. Fortunately, no injuries were reported in that. Also, the board of directors for the Butte Rescue Mission has released its executive director. The board seeking a replacement for Rocky Lyons, who has been executive director for the mission since September of 2014. According to a news release from Rescue Mission President Paul Buckley, the release states that the board recognizes Lyons' many contributions to the mission, but, quote, has decided that a change of leadership is required for the long-term success of the mission, end quote. Here's one for you now. Scripps News Literacy Week brings together high school journalists from across the nation, and students in Boise, Bozeman joined in as well, investigating missing and murdered indigenous women, a tragic case that hit all too close to home. MTN's Cody Boyer was behind the camera as the team tackled the topic. She touched everyone's heart. She was just that person. Selena Not Afraid was just like any other 16-year-old Montana girl. She's just the person that brightens up the room. To Taza, she was much more than that. We would 
go hang out at the rims or go eat somewhere, maybe go bowling. While the story of Selena hits close to home for many Montanans, for those who knew her best, it is deeply personal. We reached out to Taza, Selena Not Afraid's best friend and the one who first started the social media campaign to bring her home. She touched everyone's heart. She was just that person that was there for anybody. Memories, playing basketball together to the everyday routine, attending classes at St. LeBray Indian School in Billings. Until New Year's Day. Bighorn County Sheriff Pete Big here says after getting conflicting stories, detectives re-interviewed witnesses. That begs the question, why was she not found sooner? But so many questions surrounding her death remain. I'm sure that there, there'll be a lot of broken hearts. Yeah. Never thought something like this would happen. Never thought I would be having to look for Selena. Not Afraid went missing outside of an I-90 rest stop near Billings on January 1st. Selena's friends and family took to social media immediately. Everyone would just post, hope for Sal, hope for Sal, because everyone was so worried and concerned. I still have hope and I'm not going to stop. Just minutes after this interview, Bighorn County Sheriff's officials reported they had discovered a body near the place Not Afraid had disappeared, and a short time later, confirmed the worst. This isn't just a Montana issue. This isn't just an indigenous issue. This is an American issue. To Katie Fire Thunder in Bozeman, Not Afraid Stories is part of something larger. A big issue I hear consistently with these families is not enough has been done. Fire Thunder is a student and a columnist on a collective called Changing Women, sharing stories of murdered and missing young women. Fire Thunder says she was especially moved by the story of another missing Native young woman, Henny Scott. Scott, who went missing on December of 2018, was only 14 years old when she was found dead. And the fact that it's still happening at an enormous rate is appalling and unacceptable, and so I think making sure these people in power are local politicians, national politicians, know who these girls are. Selena's story has resonated with many people in Montana and beyond, but there are hundreds of cases like Selena's all around the country. People who care about this issue are taking to social media to help bring awareness to the problem. Zachariah rides at the door as a sophomore at MSU and a member of the American Indian Executive Council. It's not going unheard of and it's being spoken of like around all Indian country. Rides at the door says the problem of missing and murdered indigenous women is an epidemic. I've grown up in a family of women basically with my mom, my two older sisters. Just having that feeling like, what if they're next? It's terrifying. It's been a week now since Lena Not Afraid's body was found about three quarters of a mile from where she was last reported seen. Members of the Bozeman community gathered to honor her legacy as well as the legacy of thousands of other indigenous women that go missing every single year. Not Afraid's story has garnered national attention, adding support to Montana Senator John Tester's campaign to improve resources for the missing and murdered indigenous woman crisis. Tester also took to Twitter shortly after investigators found Not Afraid, saying in part, Sharla and I are heartbroken for Selena's family and friends. I think just talking about it, sharing the stories is super important and honest, like the littlest things can make a difference. If there is hope. We can come together as a community and as people. You won't ever be forgotten. A message that, as Tesa puts it, is as powerful as Not Afraid could have hoped for. A memory she will always hold on to. I still go back through our text messages and I reread them. She's always telling me to keep my head up and to keep pushing myself. Thank you for letting her story be heard all around. In Bozeman, Olivia, Adele, Andy, Brooke, and Kelly, MTN News. Without thinking of you. Now, Not Afraid's family has announced they will be working with a private investigator to look further into Selena's case. Her funeral was held over the weekend. Shout out to those high school students and to MTN's Cody Boyer for putting that piece together. In other headlines this morning, the future of transportation is here, but the current problem is that very few people are buying into the idea of going electric. 
On a scale of 1 to 100, people fall in the middle when it comes to confidence in electric. That's according to new findings by J.D. Power. People just don't see them as reliable as gas-powered vehicles. Those feelings are also echoed in a recent AAA survey. An overwhelming majority of people that do own an electric car now say they had at least one major concern before they made the purchase. But AAA says those fears are mostly just misconceptions. I think a lot of the consumer concerns out there are range anxiety, being able to find a charge if you need it, but there are some other things out there, like people like to be able to hear the hum of the engine. Now, in terms of finding charging stations, more employers are starting to offer them. There are map programs from AAA and plug share for drivers. And the first U.S. gas station that fully converted to electric, electric opened last year, but most people don't uh, but do it at home. Bottom line is the more people know about how electric works, the more comfortable they are. Visit the dealership, ask as many questions as you can, find out as much information as possible about these vehicles, and then take them for a test drive. AAA also found once customers got into electric vehicles, those fears eased over time. In fact, 96% say they would buy electric again. Three quarters of the households that have both an electric and a gas-powered car say they ended up driving the electric a lot more, which probably boils down to the cost of driving. AAA found on average, electric owners have saved $700 a year in fuel and about $300 a year in maintenance. Very interesting. 6.40 now on this Tuesday. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, a Chinese city under lockdown and others around the world looking to rescue their citizens from it. We'll take a look at the international reaction to the coronavirus outbreak. But first, we're going to check in with Anthony Mason to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning as the world continues to mourn Kobe Bryant. We are at his high school with how they're trying to honor the basketball legend, see the impact he had on kids. Plus, first on CBS This Morning, a new report warns about a big increase in data breaches affecting millions of Americans. We'll show you the way thieves are trying to steal our data. And Pastor T.D. Jakes will be in Studio 57 to talk about healing in a time of tragedy. And first on CBS This Morning, you'll have a special announcement about a new foundation. We will see you all at 7.